Hello, everyone. It's Andrea Wilson Mirza here. I'm the director of Reframe, which is WIF's collaborative initiative with Sundance Institute. And I am so thrilled to be joined by director Catherine Hardwick, whose film Mafia Mama premieres this week. Catherine, thank you so much for making time to chat with us. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> A lot of women in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> So many amazing women, um, and I'm I'm so excited to dig in and learn a little bit more about how all this came together. Um, I I heard or read that Tony Collette was actually the one that brought you this project initially, and I'm so excited to see the two of you collaborating again. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Well, um, Tony and I did the movie Miss You Already. We shot it in London with Drew Barrymore. And that was a very fun experience. So when she called up and said, hey, I've got this other project that this amazing uh, uh, French woman, Amanda Sears, that she dreamed up this concept. She, I'm like, well, let me read it, man. She goes, and we're going to shoot it in Italy. Of course, I'm like, okay, that's sounding better by the minute. And so when you're reading the script and you know Tony's gonna be in it, you know, you just can visualize her doing every scene. And Tony is the most versatile actress. I mean, obviously she's been in all these very dramatic things, getting killed, you know, the staircase, but she's so funny, like in United States of Terra and all her other comedies. So I just thought she was going to really nail this character and take us on this great ride of a woman that is a people pleaser, that is kind of passive at the beginning. And then she really learns what her own power and her own skills are by the end. I love that. And there's a lot of deeply relatable pieces in there of uh, for this industry, perhaps as well of, you know, that uh, that that journey, right, of of claiming and owning that power in place. I, I love that. Um, I definitely was feeling in, uh, you know, the promotion for the film, getting Eat, Pray, Love, also getting The Godfather. Um, I would love to hear about your inspirations or references as you were starting to build the world of the film. Well, definitely, since we talk about Eat, Pray, Love, and we talk about The Godfather, of course, I wanted to watch those movies again, Under the Tuscan Sun, you know, all those beautiful fantasy movies about our fantasies of going to Italy. And I wanted people to kind of, at the end, feel like they did have this really fun trip to Italy, you know, and of course, The Godfather we, you know, worship the beautiful movies that Francis Ford Coppola made. So the idea that we're doing a mashup or like, you know, playing with both kinds of genres. Tony thinks she's going, her character thinks she's going to have a rom-com adventure and it's <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> Well, I love that actually. I I love the mix of genres and I think that's such an interesting through line through your own work and career as well. Like I feel like you've had all of these amazing female protagonists but across different genres and I I I would love to hear you talk a little bit about that and how that, you know, factors into your own work. Well, yes, I mean that's kind of fun. You know, my first movie uh, of course, is this teen angst drama, you know, of 13 with Holly Hunter, the mother having a very intense and layered character, and the two daughter, the, the daughter, Evan Rachel Wood, who did such a great multi-layered job, you know, on that pro on that project. So you really feel for those two women and for Nikki Reed, you know, my co-writer, you feel for all three women, what they want, what they want in life, what they're trying to achieve and all the obstacles that they're going through. And so that's a teen a family drama, but some people call that a horror movie for parents. So, <laughs> uh, you could look at that either way. Um, of course, you know, having, yeah, I mean, of course, um, Twilight, you know, we we feel what Bella feels, you know, and this coming of fish out of water, coming to a new world. In this one, Tony's a fish out of water also coming into Italy, not really fitting in, not feeling, speaking the languages. So I love that idea of being able to play in different arenas because all of us, I think I love 
every kind of movie, really. I love every job. And sometimes I do want to feel sad or I want to feel just have a laugh, you know, and just be entertained. And sometimes I want to go deep. And I, I think that's great. That's what's beautiful about films. You can have every range of a human experience by going into that beautiful dark theater and just being transported. I love that. And in in this one too, I like you've got some real action sequences in this film too, which must have been so fun, A, to do on location and looks looks incredible. But I, you know, I think it's so vital that, you know, women are seen, you know, on screen in these spaces, but also that you're, you know, crafting this work and and you know, have that versatility to work across so many genres. Um, and it, it, I feel like this really encapsulates so much of that in one project, which is so exciting. Yes, I think that's a great point. I mean, I personally love action. I, I love to surf, boogie board, ride mountain bikes. Like last weekend, I'm bombing down the hill, Santa Monica Mountains. So I like action. You know, that's sort of my favorite thing in life. You know, when I'm not working, let's go do something outrageous, go kayaking or something. So I like to figure out a way to translate, you know, a char character's inner life, what they're feeling and thinking. And let's see that through action. Even, you know, in the Twilight adaptation, you know, there's moments in the book where you're really inside Della's head. And I'm like, how do we put that as an external thing? Scenes that were in the book, like off camera, like the final fight in the ballet sequence, I'm like, we're going to see that fight. Even the, the thrill, the exhilaration of being with a sexy vampire, let's do the treetop sequence. That's not in the, in the book, but that's like an action, you know, making it cinematic, making it making it move, you know? Um, so that, I love that kind of thing. And that was a lot of fun working with these kind of crazy Italian stunt dudes and, you know, going to the little towns and like, now we're going to have a motorcycle bombing down these stone little villages and everything. So that was the most fun. And, the, and then there's also kind of the gore level, or you could say the violence you know which um i i loved cocaine bear i love what elizabeth banks that she just did this crazy like muscular movie and you know and that's what i mean i didn't know about cocaine bear at the time but i wanted to see the gore and feel the gore also in this because i wanted to build that rage where tony is kind of enraged by uh, physically being assaulted and emotionally being assaulted by her bosses, which are not too cool. <laughs> her misogynist bosses that actually put her on mute. They don't even want to hear her voice. So I thought this is going to be fun to feel that rage building. And she's, you know, really gets into it. You know, <laughs> So I had a, a live cast made of the actor's face so that we could really hurt him. Not not hurt the actor, but hurt the live cast, a live cast made of his male body parts. <laughs> so we could hurt those too. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I can't wait. I'm so excited also, I have to say, that this film has this great theatrical release. I think it's so, it's going to be so awesome for people to see this in the theater and go with a group of friends and have that experience together. I, I'm, I was so thrilled to see that. Yes, it's so much more fun, I think, to laugh when you've got your friends there laughing with you, you know, instead of just by yourself giggling at home. But we'll take it both ways. We'll take it. We'll take it. I'm very excited that Bleeker, you know, just said, let's get it out there. Let's make a fun movie that is, you know, a fun movie that you can just go and have a blast watching. I love that. I love that. You know, I think it's, like these topics that we're digging into as well about, you know, this representation in different genres and styles and, you know, maybe that have not seen a large historical representation of women directors, right? Um, we're in a moment now where the numbers for women leading projects across the board is actually backsliding a little bit in terms of those sort of record high numbers we were seeing a couple of years ago. So, you know, as someone who's done such incredible work in this space and you've been such a voice and an advocate for other women working in the industry as well, I'm wondering if there's, you know, anything that's giving you hope in this moment or anything that that you see as, 
you know, a, a potential, you know, energy to keep us moving forward um, when we, you know, get daunted by hearing those numbers and those stats? I mean, yes, I still am very hopeful. I mean, obviously in the television space, we uh, I'm working on a Hulu show right now. They make a huge effort to hire more women directors and persons uh, diverse uh, directors too. So that's really exciting. That gives a lot of people a lot of experience. So when they do want the chance to make their movie, they can say, I directed a Game of Thrones. I directed a Hulu show. That gives people confidence that they can do a feature. And of course, they can have their own series too. So I love that at least uh, the streamers and television are giving a lot of great opportunities. That's very cool. And then, you know, fun things like Cocaine Bear, hopefully our movie, people got to see, you know, all of these, everything kind of helps. It's one more cool thing, Barbie, you know, will come out. So we're just like thinking positive. Let's just keep it going. Positivity. Oh, I love that. And we need it. And I mean, on that note of kind of where we're going, um, Women in Film, WIF, actually turns 50 this year. So Big year, big year for us. You know, it was the first organization founded around this issue of gender equity in Hollywood. Um, so it's got me thinking a lot about obviously these past 50 years, but also the next 50 years and, you know, what we want to see. Any any dreams, any hopes for, you know, women in film in the next 50 years? Yes, I mean, that is amazing. 50 years, way before anybody else was ever talking about it. And now still really being such a beautiful, supportive organization, you know, 50 years hanging in there. Yes. So I think that the idea, we hope that we achieve parity so that very soon we say half the movies are directed by women. Half of them have a woman as the leading character. Hopefully that'll be soon. Maybe it'll be faster than we think, you know, and then women in film will just be celebrating <laughs> that. But, you know, that's that's what we hope. <laughs> Yeah, I I love that. Thank you for that. And thank you for your work and being like just such an incredible champion of these issues, as well as just such a beautiful director that I, I feel really privileged to get to speak with. And, and thank you for sharing that. I know the women in film members will be lining up to see Mafia Mama in theaters. Um, opens this coming weekend, right? weekend and I just went and got my mafia mama nails done okay so I'm encouraging people to get dressed like mafia mama when let's dress like a mafia mama your best badass boss self when you go to the theater and have fun with it yeah I <laughs> love it we will be there can't wait again thank you so much Catherine for making the time and congratulations on a fabulous film uh, we can't wait to see it in theaters Oh, yeah. And if you guys do a good Mafia Mama thing at the theater, post it. We're going to send some prizes to people that have the coolest outfits. And it's special Mafia Mama wine that you will, one of a kind. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We will make sure we have some details on our social channels. Um, super excited. Thanks again, Catherine. Thank you guys so much. Yay, women in film. <laughs>